Hello everyone, happy Wednesday you guys and welcome back to Lunchtime with Sydney. Today I am being joined by actress Jen Padalecki, you guys, commonly known from Wildfire, Supernatural, and now making her big return to the small screen in the reboot of Walker, you guys. She also has a brand new digital platform that is coming out very, very soon. We're going to talk all about that as well, called Town. As always, if you guys have questions for our guests, submit them in the comments as we go and we will get to them as always. I hope you guys are having a great day so far. Happy Wednesday to you, and super excited to have Jen joining me today to talk about everything that she has going on, which is a lot. And I don't know about you guys, but I am so excited that she is back on the small screen. I know there are a lot of fans who are so happy to see her back on television, and I definitely am in agreement with that. So we are going to get to all about what it's like for her to be back in front of us, on her latest show, her brand new digital community called Town, really focusing on sustainability, which is absolutely awesome. And we are going to get it all directly from Jen. That is what we are doing today. So as soon as she joins in the room, we are going to connect and get this conversation started. As always, if you guys have questions for our guests, submit them in the comments as we go, and we will get to them live and in the moment. As always, welcome to those of you guys who are just joining me right now. Now, happy Wednesday, you guys. Next week is the 200th episode anniversary, believe it or not, of this show. We've done it now for nearly a year, and we have really exciting uh, guests and installations and activations coming out for you guys throughout the week of next week, so make sure to stick around for that as well. So much to discuss, so much to do and to celebrate. And thank you guys for being a part of this journey, you know, for this last year. It is really crazy to believe. Thank you to you guys who are just joining us right now. Jen Padalecki is going to be joining us. We're going to have a fun chat. We're connecting right all about what she's been up to. She's a lot of newness going on. So let's get this conversation started right now. Hello. Hi. Hi, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Can you see me? It's a little hard to see you and hear you at the moment. Okay, then I'm going to move out of my neighborhood because I have the worst service in my house. Oh, my goodness. I'm loving this makeup, by the way. I can see the eye, and I'm all about a statement eye, so I'm loving it. Well, I know. I was inspired by you. So I had my friend Billy Mercer come over this morning, and he did my makeup, and he used to work at Trish McAvoy at Bloomingdale's, and he's like, oh, my God, I know Sydney. I know Billy. Yes, of course. That is crazy. <laughs> that is such a small world. We are yeah. having a little nope. difficulty hearing you um, at I'm the I'm giving moment. you a tour. Can you see me? It's, we're having a little connectivity issues. It's a little blurry um, right now. But oh, now Sorry. we're good. Now I see you. Okay. Right here works. Okay. We're going to do it right outside in my yard. <laughs> I love it. Well, Sorry. welcome to Lunchtime with Sydney. So excited to have you and love that we have a mutual already connection in common. <laughs> I know. Me too. I know. <laughs> so, so fun. Yeah. So fun. So how are you? How's it going? How's New York? Feeling, You're in New York, right? I'm in New York. I was going to ask you the first question as well, because you guys down in Texas have not had it easy recently. So how are you and your family doing? Well, good. I mean, it, it's kind of crazy because you would never know that I was just snowboarding a couple of days ago down my driveway and now it's like 80 degrees outside. So it's really difficult to gauge um, <laughs> what is happening. But um, my I don't know if you can see my garden is like bleached. So that's not super fun. Um, but, uh, you know, just we're, we have it pretty good. Can, all things considered, our water was only off for like 24 hours in the heat and power was only off for like 24 hours. And a lot of people still can't, they don't have access to waters. And um, I, it's a lot. It's crazy. I so I know our hearts are going out with everyone who's down where you are in Texas. We had a lot of snow in the Northeast, but we're definitely more prepared for it. So we'll never complain yeah. in New York again when we get snow because you guys <laughs> had it in a different way for sure. Well, Jen, this year, it's definitely been difficult this past year for all of us, but you've still been going at it and really shedding your positivity. You've returned to the small screen. You have a brand new platform that you're launching, which we're going to get into as well. But how does it feel to be on Walker and back on TV after around a decade? 
It feels really good. I, I didn't realize how much I, I missed working and miss, miss being on, on camera and working on camera. I really love acting and um, it was, you know, my like my livelihood for so long and so I feel so lucky to be able to go back and be working alongside my husband so I felt like it was a really nice way to ease back into it because I felt really comfortable and good and he would you know help me run lines and like we'd throw notes back and forth so I feel really lucky to be able to go back in this capacity and um it's just I don't know it's so nice it's really fun well we're all excited to see you back and I feel like you had a you know full circle moment because you initially met your husband you know with Supernatural now you're back together what was your reaction when you heard that you were asked to play the role of you know his on-screen wife you know, it's so funny. It was actually a year ago from this weekend because this weekend is our anniversary. And um, he got a phone call while we were at dinner celebrating our 10th wedding anniversary. And he kept getting these text messages from Anna Fricky, who's his um, showrunner and co-creator. And she kept texting him and he's like, I think something's going on. I got to answer this call. Do you mind? And so he walked out of the room, out of the restaurant, came back and he's like, hey, I have this question for you. Um, Anna's wondering about you playing my wife on the show and both of us were like processing all of it because I don't think he knew and it, it, he seemed just as shocked as I did and um, it was a no brain I mean it's a no brainer I will do honestly anything and work alongside my husband in any capacity I really it's something I really enjoy with him and working with him um, and so you know I mean to play with him and at work I, I mean I was, I'm very excited. I love, I love working with them. So it's the best of both worlds. Did you ever get nervous about being back on air? Of course you were brought back on Supernatural, you know, right at the end of the show, but did you ever feel nervous about just making that comeback? Yeah, of course I did. I, I mean, I, like, hell yeah, I felt nervous. It's really nerve wracking to start, you know, the last time I acted really was in my twenties and, you know, it was, it, so to come back now, I just turned 40 and feel like, oh gosh, can I still do this? Are people going to be drawn to me? And can I, do I still remember what I'm doing? Can I remember my lines? And so certainly nerve wracking. Uh, but it, it, it really did feel like a bicycle, like riding a bicycle. It was just like, oh my gosh, like a sigh of relief. I forgot how much I loved doing this. And so for me, it was I really feel so good that the cast and crew around surrounding are just so kind and just so welcoming and warm and patient. <laughs> so it's really great. Well, you were absolutely killing it. And people, like I said, are so excited to have you back. I feel like, especially right now, like in this moment in time where we're all a little bit nostalgic about the things that made us happy, you know, pre pandemic, it's sort of like the best moment to see some of our favorite, you know, stars coming back. Wildfire was really when we were first introduced to you, uh, 2005. Yeah. When you look back at that experience, what would you say is a memory or a highlight that with you today? Oh gosh, um, you know, for me, I was uh, that was the first TV show I ever did, and I was thrown in as number one, and I felt like it was like having you know pull your bootstraps up and let's get to work. And it was an education. And so looking back on that, I remember hitting the grind and just being like, oh my gosh, this is, this is wild. This is crazy. And, and I, I wish, I wish I could go back and, and tell that younger self, like, it's going to be fine. It's going to be okay. Cause it was like, so nerve wracking for so long. Um, Oh, shoot. Are you there? Yeah, I see you. Can you hear me? Okay. Sorry. Okay. I'm terrible at this. You would think by now I would know how to do this. No, you're perfect. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, I I have so many great friends from that show. Nicole Tubiola Hutchinson is still one of my closest friends. And so many wild memories. And, and I, I feel like I really learned what it was like to be on a set and, you know, really be – a leader in that capacity. So I feel like I take it now to every job, no matter what it is, being able to use that, those leadership skills, you know, even as a parent, being able to juggle a lot in your patience level and your stamina. I mean, that like, there's nothing that will challenge you more than being number one on a call sheet. I feel like it's pretty, 
grueling. And you have been such a go-getter, you know, since day one. You went to NYU Tisch. You were really always hustling um, to, you know, be on air. So what do you attribute to that motivation that has carried with you through not just your acting projects, but everything that you do? Yeah, I mean, I... I'm trying to be work smarter, not harder. I tend to, I think it's the Capricorn in me where I'm just like, I love to work. I love feeling like I'm independent and I can do this by myself. And, and I just, I really love to create and to make things and, and, and just be a hard worker. I really feel strongly that if you're going to do something, you know, throw yourself in and go for it as hard as you can. And so, um, you know, I, I I like to continue to do that. And, and now where I'm at in life, I'm just trying to be smarter about the things that I'm working on and make sure that the things that I am working on, I can really commit to it and I can make a big difference. So I, I, that's the big thing is trying to make a big positive difference, but also things that I care about, you know. Definitely. So let's talk about your new digital community that you are coming out with right now. It, it's pronounced just like town, right? But with two uh, exactly. W's. Okay, perfect. Yep. What yep. sparked so, this idea? Well, I grew up in Mont. Oh, I was born in California. And then my family moved when I was about 13 years old to Montana. And, and it was a huge life changing experience. I was 13 and you know this is before the internet really existed so it was like I didn't know what I was getting myself into or how to communicate with friends back home and and I really was thrown into nature and and hiking in Glacier Park and then later when we moved to uh, Idaho our curriculum in school was um, the outdoors were just as smart uh, just a, as big of a part of our academic curriculum you know um, as you know math was the equivalent to you know, learning to build a snow cave. Um, and uh, so for me, the outdoors and learning to cope with anxiety or feelings, you know, I, I really used the nature to adjust and cope. And, and that still continued even when I went to New York, you know, I would, you, you know, New York is a concrete jungle, you know, as they say, and, you know, finding that time and space in nature was challenging but it's one of those places that they really have nooks and crannies and different ways in which you can cope and I wanted to figure out <clears throat> a way to marry that feeling and sustainability in the environment and climate change and find a platform for it and so there's so much and and I'm kind of uh, flubbing this a little bit you know a lot of this also came about after having kids and wanting to give them that experience. And for me, um, there's so much conflicting information out there about sustainability and being eco-friendly and what that means. And it's different for everybody. And it's it seems really elitist and it seems very all or nothing. And it's very, um, <laughs> there's Billy. <laughs> hi, Billy. And he says hi. hi. <laughs> um, and it's very, um, it's just, it, it's, it's unapproachable. And so I really wanted to create a platform that was one uh, research based. So everything that you're reading about is, in fact, research based. Um, we have experts who are journalists and have high, high standards to um, go with. And so that's like number one. And two, we also wanted to have a platform that is problem solving. And so what are these takeaways that we can do and implement in our own lives? First with ourselves, because I really feel strongly that we need to put the oxygen masks on first in order to be able to be better for ourselves and for our community and for the planet at large. So um, it's about you know problem solving within the sustainability space and making it uh, incremental changes and something that you feel like you can be in charge of and what's right for you may not be right for me. So it's not like, hey, I'm going to throw out my wardrobe and go all green mm -hmm. or something. It's like, okay, well, as I move forward on this path, what are some ways that I can shop with this in mind? Or how do I grocery shop this way? Or maybe it's, I'm going to build a garden. Or maybe it's, hey, how do I change my carbon emissions? And making it more palatable and, and user-friendly. Yeah, I think that's what's sort of missing so, right now is, you know, 
I think everyone wants to sort of do good and try to uh, incorporate being sustainable into our daily lives, but sometimes you just don't even know the small steps that you can take. Um, and you exactly. released a launch video that was um, on your website just now. So are you planning yeah. to release more video content? What else content wise are you going to start sharing? Yeah, hundred percent. That's in the works right now. I really want to make this a platform that's diverse um, and that we uplift many voices. So I want the personal aspect to be there because I also find that with uh, these spaces, it's a lot of like, Hey, here are the products or, you know, it's, you don't see the journey. And I want people to understand like, Oh, I can do that. And so there's going to be a lot more content in conversations and dialogue um and we will be we're shooting a bunch of content in the next couple of weeks um talking about regenerative farming talking about our water systems talking about um food deserts and things that are like what the heck is that but ways that are, like you realize oh my gosh this is affecting my community this is actually i'm affecting this community and uh you know i think video the video form is a great way for someone to get educated and entertained at the same time. So totally. We will and taking action is something that takes a lot of confidence, you know, to do. So what do you attribute to being a confident woman and going after all of your, you know, different passions with town, with acting, with being a mom, it's a lot to balance and you do it. You're so sweet. Well, you know, I mean, if you saw me on the inside, you'd be like, Oh, you know, I, I think maybe I just put it out there. I think, you know, I, I, the truth be told is that I, have been so nervous about this and not confident about it because I am that perfectionist. That's like, I want to make this great and I want people to love it. And, and, you know, oh, sorry, there's my, that's <laughs> okay. Um, but I, you know, I think the biggest thing is to be completely transparent and I'm not an expert at any of these things. I'm not an expert at sustainability, but I care about it. I'm not an expert actor, but you know what? I love it. And I'm not an expert businesswoman, but I'm going to try my damnedest. And I think that's the thing is, you know, I don't claim to be a perfect any, you know, I'm not a perfect mom. I'm not a perfect wife. It's just I'm doing what I can and I'm giving what I can and being realistic about yeah. it and, and really transparent about it. And, and I, you know, I think that's the, the best thing. I, you know, who gave me some great advice was actually Brooklyn Decker. And I'm not going to quote her because I'm going to butcher the quote, but basically it was just forgiving yourself mm -hmm. and just going for it essentially. And, and don't be, don't, you know, don't be caught up in the, in the packaging, be caught up in the product, focus on the product. Don't focus on the packaging, you know, like just work through it and, and go for your goals. I love that. Your authenticity shines through. Self-care is obviously something that has been thrown in our face this last year, I feel like we can't escape it. So what does your, you know, top sort of self care routine look like to keep you feeling a little bit more relaxed in the midst of everything you have going on? You know, I love, um, I love, I, I love recentering. And there's so many ways to do that. Um, self care for me, you know, is the beauty part. I love, I love a good facial. I love good self care. I love a good, you know, mask. Um, but I also love recentering my body and my mind and I love apps like a uh, headspace yeah sometimes I'll lock myself in the closet and just get a good meditation going and it might be two minutes uh but I I don't want anyone to think you have to take 45 minutes out of your day because not everyone has that time to do that but you know just recentering and recalibrating um that that's self-care for me also getting lost in a good book because sometimes it's just like I don't want to think, you know, and self care could be like watching Bravo. I mean, sometimes we all need a good housewives moment just to be like, I just want to forget the world. I want to have a good laugh. I want to drink a glass of wine and not think about, you know, the pandemic and how shitty things are. And, you know, totally. so, I think so, many, so many different meanings. I, I feel like I love that. I know Salt Lake City Housewives has been my escape. Uh, this year. So <laughs> wild, wild, right? It's so true. Wild. Whatever works is good. Well, Jen, I thought it'd be fun for us to play a little game of rapid fire. So whatever answer okay. comes to your mind first, that's the one you'll share. You ready? Okay. All right. Ready. Describe yourself in three words. Ooh, hardworking, curious, kind. You went to school with Marla Sokoloff from Full House. Do you guys still keep in touch? We DM. Love that. Yeah. What is your favorite book that you've read recently? I am loving Under a White Sky by Elizabeth Colbert. 
um, it's fantastic and mind blowing. What is one thing from your childhood that you still have with you today? Oh, good question. Um, my mom it just gave me this pillow that is so weird that winds up that says my baby's first Christmas. And I don't know why I still have it. <laughs> and a pair of white gloves. It's so weird. That is so random. I love that. All right, next question. I hope I'm getting this right. It has been said that you have two dogs, 14 chickens, and a hive of honeybees. Is that all right? All right. Yes, we've had seven chickens die during the pandemic. So we're down oh. to seven, but. Oh my goodness. Okay, yes. well, if you could add another animal to the mix of what you have already, what would it be? A fainting goat. There you I love how you had that right ready. I love it. <laughs> what is your favorite pair of shoes in your closet? Ooh, I, uh, you know what? I am really, well, I love Dior. I'm not going to lie. Uh, and I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Dior is like one of my favorites, but I'm really loving this brand called uh, Fortress of Inca made here in Austin. Um, amazing shoes. Love it. Got to check that out. I read, and Karyuma. Karyumas are great too. Perfect. I read in an interview that after the pandemic, we reached some sort of normalcy, you would love to take a solo trip. Where is the first place that you would like to go? Um, you know, I probably would get lost somewhere in the woods. I really like like Montana and um, somewhere where you don't hear anything. You don't realize there's plenty, like transportation exists. Interesting. On a scale of one to 10, how organized are you? Ooh, I'm like a seven. Good. What is the most Good. random item in your fridge right now? Um, I still have a rutabaga leftover from like two weeks ago. It's sitting there. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> if you could invite any three people over for dinner, who would they be? Oh, interesting. Oh my God. Living or not, um, by the way. Oh, cool. Okay. Um, well, I think, I think that Ruth Bader Ginsburg would be amazing to chat with. Um, I think that learning from like someone like a Buddha or Gandhi would be killer. Um, and I don't know, I would probably like throw a Navy seal in there or something. Like, I, I don't know something like, you know, to balance it all out to like how to get more grit and be like tough. Yes, I love this. Such an eclectic mix. Okay. And the follow up question to this is what would you serve at that dinner? I make a really awesome rotisserie chicken, um, probably with either a quinoa salad with feta and cucumbers or a really good kale salad. Sounds so good. I'm hungry already. What is one family tradition that you guys have developed over there in Austin throughout this pandemic? Um, we like to say the highs and lows every day. And we also really like to go on um, evening bike rides, walks, or just throwing the football around while we go walk around like yesterday. I love that. And saying the highs and lows, that's actually a really good tactic. It's like when you speak about what's bothering you or you know, even the positive, yeah. it's good to get it out. So hundred percent. It's so it's, I think it's really good for the kids also that the highs and the lows can be in the same breath. Definitely. We're going to do one more rapid fire here. You live in yeah. NYC, obviously when attending NYU Tisch, what is the number one thing that you miss about being a New Yorker? Oh man, the, the, um, just being like in the same capacity or in the, the same, like just the breath that you take in New York, the, the energy, the vibe, the ability to go out at three in the morning or, you know, get just go for a jog at five, like, and knowing that there's so many interesting and eclectic people doing so many cool and amazing things there. I, I just, the heartbeat of that city is, it's wild. It is. It's a little quieter these days. We're hoping it gets back sure. to being wild soon because it needs it, but uh, it totally does. I know. I'm sure. Yeah. Well, you completed the rapid fire round. Thanks for doing that. And thank you. Of course. And Jen, when you look back at everything that you've done since starting out, you know, as that 20 year old girl pursuing acting, what would you say has been your proudest career moment so far? Oh, that's awesome. My proudest career moment in acting. Anything. Anything that you've done. 
Um, I'm actually, I'm, I'm really proud of town. I have to be honest. I know it's a small but mighty company right now. We just launched, but I've never, I've never done something like that. That's completely on my own. And, you know, that I thought I want to problem solve and figure this out. It feels so out of my wheelhouse, but I'm curious about it. I'm terrified of failing. Um, but I'm really proud that I went for it. And I'm, I'm proud of I'm really proud of the messaging that we have and what we, we're creating. I love that that's your proudest moment because I feel like it's so true. When you are so invested in something yourself and watching something grow and putting in your 100% energy, like there's nothing more rewarding because you know it's all on you and you know whoever else is working so hard on this each day. It's it's all you. Yeah, So I exactly. Well, Thanks. what's next from you? What can we expect? Anything we can keep an eye out specifically from town? What should we keep our eyes out for? Yeah, if you just keep following along with town every month, we're going to have a different theme. Um, and we're going to have, you know, uh, we want to have participation, we're going to start reaching out to our audiences more and learning from our audience. That to me is really important to really create a community and where we learn from each other what you know, what sustains you? What are things that you do in your own home that we could you know, share with everybody else. And uh, every month it's going to change and evolve. And we're going to focus and really hone in on, on different topics. Um, I'm really, I'm very, very excited for uh, March, but I'm very excited also for April. We're just building out some content and getting some video stuff. Um, so just stay tuned for all of that. And um, yeah, I love it. Well, we're definitely going to be staying tuned. Thank you so much, Jen, for taking the time. Look, I so appreciate it. Sorry about the internet and being outside. No, it's perfect. This is the behind the scenes of the behind the scenes, which is what I love. <laughs> it's, I mean, it's the real deal here, you know. No, you're Thank always you perfect. So Thank you so much. So good to see you. You Nice to see you too. Thank you. Take care. You too. Bye. 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 Thank you guys for watching Lunchtime with Sydney today. This conversation with Jen will be saved on my feed in case you want to go back and watch it if you missed some of it. And we'll be back here tomorrow with a whole new guest at 1230 p.m. Eastern. I'm Sydney Sadik. Take care, everybody.